years. Uh, but I guess before we kind of get into to where we're at, I, I don't know if you would believe this, Tony, but in 1300 episodes, we've never once explained to people how the Fed works. And I think that's actually a really important place to start to kind of bring us to where I, I see that smile to bring us to, to where we are today. So can we just talk a little bit about the Federal Reserve. It's shocking to me. I've read The Creature from Jekyll Island three times. We've never actually talked about it on the show. So just so people understand, we talk about fiat currency. What is the? How does the Federal Reserve work and what does it have to do with kind of the, the situation we're in now? That's a, that's a really good question because I'm not even sure the people at the Federal Reserve know how the <laughs> Federal Reserve works. And Sergio, Biden's Bernstein, Biden's head economic advisor, uh, in the last, well, he's on 60 minutes. Was it like a two weeks ago? And he couldn't quite explain about well, he was talking about where the value of money comes from and he couldn't really explain it. I, well, he was the same guy. So, too. so Adam Curry was playing this, this clip the other day on no mm -hmm. agenda. And I was dying because they just kept playing it. Cause it was so funny. No, oh, I know. And it's, I don't think, I don't think they even know. I mean, this it's, and we act like it's this, this, uh, oh, it's, it's so complicated. It's really not. I mean, you just got these cartels that come in that they you don't even really know if you know if you read the creature from Jekyll Island. And by the way, G. Ever Griffin, have you had him on your show? I have not, and I I would love to have Mr. Griffin on. He's you, brilliant. Well, I think I've got his contact through Don Joe. I'll I'll give it to. You. Oh, cool. It, he, he's amazing. I've I talked I talked to him. I said we're, we're, you're one of the reasons I went into the gold and silver business. I and I got to say that live on air and talk to him. Just but you read that book and you learn other books. Uh about the Federal Reserve and there are there are plenty. Sure. But it, again it's it was set up, you know, by the world's richest people. You know, they talk about the creature from Jekyll Island. It was November 22nd, 1910. You got the Warburgs and Kuhnlobe and the Rothschild agents and and the Rockefellers and uh again, you know, the Aldridge, the senator and I mean they're all getting together and they're creating what they didn't want to create a a central bank because people had already because that was part of the American experiment that Andrew Jackson did away with. Um, we had two banks, you know, and if you believe it, part of what threatened, uh, uh, threatened the life of, uh, Alexander Hamilton too. But anyway, <laughs> I don't, I don't necessarily disbelieve that either. I mean, he, um, Hamilton may have got in over his head. Um, you know, he, I think he really believed in centralized power, uh, he believed in finance and debt and things like that, a lot more so than somebody like Thomas Jefferson. If you read into Thomas Jefferson's writings about you know, warning against, you know, the, if if we allow these central banks to to run the country there, you know, our uh, our children will wake up homeless on the continent that con conquered by their forefathers. And I think that's that's what's happening. You know, Andrew Jackson, he killed the second bank of the United States. He would not renew the charter and he wanted I killed the bank on his tombstone. Interesting history. Uh, J.P. Morgan was born the year, the first year we didn't have a bank, uh, a central bank, and he died the year that we got one back. I thought that was interesting. Wow. He died in 1913. Um, so you go from 1837 to 1913. There was no central bank in the U.S. That's one of the reasons why um, we didn't have inflation. <laughs> uh, there was a period during the Civil War and, and Abraham. Well, there was Lincoln. a tax right after the Civil War to try and recoup some of that, but it was short lived. Yes, very short lived, and r by the way, ruled unconstitutional. Yes, right. So it was like it was the 1890s. They were looking at that. There was a yes. there was a there was a tax. I, I know my tax history, Tony. That's good. <laughs> well, you got to. You're in business. I mean, uh, you better know it. And that's that's the thing is we're always trying to figure out what the what the law is with it. They keep changing it. You know, uh, yeah. the, certainly the elites don't have to worry. They just make sure that we have to jump. Um, but you're right. I mean, you 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 look at the Fed and and. How does it work? You know, it's like, well, it's basically it's a they hijack the money supply. OK, so the money supply, everything flows through them. All credit flows through them. And there was only two presidents in history that ever produced greenbacks or notes direct from the Treasury. One was Abraham Lincoln and the other one was John F. Kennedy. And they were both shot in the head in public uh, to uh, to channel Jim Mars. Jim Mars used to say that. I think that's interesting. My, my favorite Jim Mars phrase, by the way, is also that he used to call George W. Bush a post turtle. He said, "You don't know how oh, the creature got I, up there, I, I but you just want to help." Time. You don't he, know how the creature got up there, but you just want to help it down. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only other person that that ever uh, referenced that. I, I've done that many times on my shows and made people laugh. And it's absolutely a because I'm from Texas, you know, and North Texas. Uh, so so was Jim Mars, and they, you know, the world's a, a lot worse off without him. 
Um, he was a he was a genuine human being. I wish I'd had the chance to meet him, but I've I've read so many of his books and and watched so many of his appearances, and they don't make them like that anymore. It's just yeah. Um, it's yeah. We we we're in desperate need of people like Jim Mars, but yeah, you know, it's it's hard to. To, to tackle that because you know even with the with the creature from Jekyll Island you, it's, you don't really get down to who owns it who owns the f- do you own the fed do the people so own I've the always fed? had the idea and I could be like once again I could be wrong because it's like you have these member banks but then the member banks are also owned by the, the Bank of International Settlements in, in Basel as far right. as I know so it's kind of like who owns who well that's it's a shell game right and it's kind of like John D. Rockefeller he says uh, own nothing control everything so it's it's really just kind of looking for ghosts, you know, like who who owns what? And it really it's just about this, folks. They control the money supply. So imagine this. Um, you ever have you ever taken part in a transaction and wondered, I wonder why this person's involved? Like there's like a person that shouldn't be there, like a middleman of a middleman, you know, like you just kind of look around if you're in a if you're in a business deal sometimes and you go, I wonder why this guy gets anything. Or why are you involved? I, it's this the question is the I same. ask myself about health insurance every day. But there anyway. you go. <laughs> right, or something like that, like you know, or a real estate. Sometimes, and you're like, I don't. Why do I have to pay this person? There, there is there. There's something about that, like that same kind of analogy with the Federal Reserve, because folks, it's not federal and it's not a reserve. There's, it's not a federal agency. It's not doesn't have oversight. You can't audit it. Um, you can't look at its books. By the way, it lost money. The Federal Reserve lost almost a trillion dollars. How do you do that? How how do you make the money, but you also lose money existing? It, it, so that's where we are. And, and I think that people try to like subscribe like it's some kind of magical thing. Like Jerome Powell is going to lower rate. He's going to raise rates. He's going to be hawkish. And I don't know what he's going to do. And, and Janet Yellen says it's transitory. They seem like they're really smart. They're really not. Well, let's talk just, about that, though, because I think that's an interesting point. So we got we have the Federal Reserve. Not federal. It's just federal. It's I forget. I think, it might have been another Jim Mars thing. It's as federal as Federal Express. So it's right. not federal. It doesn't have any reserves. It's owned by a bunch of these banks. But I think interest rates is also the really confusing thing to people. You know, why are interest rates kind of bouncing all over the place? I know like even last, like like uh, three years ago, we bought this house and I wasn't planning on buying another house at that point in time. But I was like, interest rates are like I paid two point seven percent. So I'm like, that, that's amazing. So it's like you look at it. How do those work? Because I think that's very confusing to people. And now, a word from our sponsors. The wellness company and their doctors are medical professionals you can trust. And their new medical emergency kits are the gold standard when it comes to keeping you safe and healthy. This medical emergency kit contains an assortment of life-saving medications, including ivermectin, z pack Rest assured, knowing that you have emergency antibiotics, antivirals, and antiparasitics on hand to help you and your family stay safe from whatever life throws at you next. So you can support the wellness company by heading over to twc.health slash JRS. That is twc.health slash JRS. Get up to 15% off select products. Support the wellness company and help support this show. Thanks again. Well, the reason that interest rates fluctuate is their attempt to control the expansion and contraction of the money supply itself. As a matter of fact, we have, since the first time since the Great Depression, we've actually contracted the money supply which isn't really hard to do since they created 80% of all the dollars ever made that were ever made. 80% of them were made in the last 60 months. So it's not, it's not hard to contract that back a little bit. And how you do that, folks, is you look at the 1970s, okay? Uh, 19, August 15th, 1971, Richard Nixon takes us off the gold standard. He has to. We were broke, okay? We started taking the silver out of our coinage in 65. We written checks we really shouldn't have written. We were doing guns and butter and the great society on the Mekong. Uh, Delta with LBJ, as he called it. So we, you know, we were we were broke essentially. We were you know, again expanding, expanding, expanding without really having the checks and balances. And these other countries noticed, so they started cashing in at the gold window. Nixon took us off the gold standard, close.